Hi there, it's William VE4VR. I recently did a presentation to the Winnipeg Amateur Radio Club, which is our local radio club here in Winnipeg, Canada. I thought I'd record the similar presentation and post it here on YouTube. So I've been working on something that I call zero configuration radio, and it's actually driven by a pain point that I think is common for a lot of amateur radio operators. I got into this hobby in uh, 1994, and ever since then I've been programming radios through the keypad, serial cables, you know, with Windows 95 or USB cables with, you know, what is it, Windows 98, Windows 7, Windows 10, and uh, other operating systems. So over the years, radios have you know gone from keypad programming to USB programming and now what I'm seeing is actually the problem is getting worse because as we get into digital radio the configuration that you have to program for each radio is a different software application incompatible programming files it's a real mess and if you think about the world of cellular phones they figured out how to do roaming 40 years ago so how can a group of radio nerds that you know can talk to the space station and bounce signals off the moon why are we still programming radios manually when the rest of the world figured this out like 40 years ago so my goal here is to actually show you some proof of concept and prototype work that i've been doing and hopefully inspire the right people to make this happen on a massive scale so first of all you start off with how do we how do we want how do we actually build this we've got so many different incompatible formats right now we've got D-Star that can't talk to System Fusion, which can't talk to DMR or NXDN or any of these digital formats. But we've got a few digital formats that are hugely popular and totally incompatible. So I'm probably looking at the uh, MMDVM project, which is a fantastic piece of development work. And really, this is an amazing tool in itself. So I could start off with something like a hotspot. So I asked my my radio buddy, Dan V4DRK, said, hey, can I borrow a bunch of stuff from you? I want to build some prototypes. And I poked around with hotspots. And then I looked at the MMDVM that Repeater Builder offers, the STM32, which is fair, you know, it's highly regarded. And, you know, that plus a mobile radio or a repeater, I'd have a high power unit. And then I started digging further and I landed on, if I want to build a prototype or a proof of concept that I can show the world, I'm going to use the OpenGD77 firmware on the GD77 handheld. And the reason why I would go for that, I'm gonna dig into that right here. This radio, I honestly think, is perhaps the coolest ham radio these days. It's not the most expensive. It doesn't have a fancy color touchscreen on it or anything like that. What it has is the ability for ham radio operators to build custom firmware images for it, adding features to it. And I saw a Facebook post in the last week where someone had, uh, I guess, added satellite Doppler shift correction to this handheld radio, which is really cool. I don't recall seeing that kind of a feature in any of the big name products that are out there. You know, for myself, I have an ICOM ID51, a Yaesu FT70, an Anytone 868. And for the most part, while those radios work, they're kind of boring. You can't do anything with them other than what they've been built to do out of the box. And you have to spend a ton of time programming these devices before you can actually do anything. In fact, the least programming probably goes into the system fusion radio where you just type in a frequency and say, I want digital. But that doesn't solve some of the core problems here. Amateur radio operators are spending a huge amount of time programming radios. And then the moment you travel, you know, even an hour away from your home location, that programming code plug or whatever you've loaded in there is almost useless. So what I was looking at here is if I wanted to solve this problem, I need a provisioning server. So if I go with a hotspot or if I go with STM, I need a radio still and I need to be able to get some coverage out of this thing. GD77 is a 5 watt radio. All I need to do here is I need to go get the source code for it and add some functions to this thing and basically throw it up on the roof here of a tall building and all of a sudden this radio can hand out whatever zone I program into it to any visitors in the area. So I'm like, this is perfect. That's what I want to play with. So this is to me uh, the perfect prototype to build on. Now let's dig into how this thing works. You have a GD77 radio. You're running modified firmware, open GD77 with more functions that everyone's adding to it every week. So now I have my function that can send and receive data. So first of all, here's my radio ID, 302-4043, call sign VE4VR. And where I live is important because this is how we're gonna determine who's at home and who's roaming or traveling. My home grid square is EN19KT and the version that I have of my home zone is version one because I later on, if you come and visit multiple times, I might have an updated version with different frequencies or color codes or whatever. And you need to know that I have a new version of that and you wanna grab it from my radio. 
So I have a second radio. In this case, I used my dad's call sign for an example. He has a different radio ID and he's across the river from me, so he's in a different grid square. So right away, these two radios say, hey, I am, I'm different from you. Maybe can you send me your roaming zone? And they can store that. So basically, I'm just using, I'm using grid square to determine, uh, am I a visitor to your area? And if so, can you send me your, your zone that you have? So all it takes is one radio programmed and then that can offer it up to everyone else. Now here's here's the idea, right? I pulled this from DHCP and I was thinking about how would DHCP solve this problem when I was building this. DHCP, when you're on a network in a computer and you plug in a laptop or whatever, desktop, Xbox, doesn't matter. It's basically looking for a server to hand it addresses so it knows how to communicate with the network. That's really what I'm trying to do here. So these other radios that receive that request, they can then offer Here's what I have, and I can choose from that on the radio and pick the one that I want and provision the radio. So all we're doing is you start with that bare radio and we're asking the neighbors nearby, what do you got? And then if so, can you share your programming with me? The purpose of doing this is we make the concept of having to program a radio ever totally obsolete. Now we have one radio in the city that can serve all the other radios. So it could be a handheld radio, mobile radio, repeater, as long as it can handle that provisioning request and hand it out in the format the radio understands, we're good to go. So this really got me back to something that was hugely popular 15 years ago. Linksys released the WRT54G router and it wasn't anything special really in its day. It was just another router you could go to your store and buy for your internet at home. But what happened is people found it contained GPL software and as a result, the source code for how to build firmware images for that router got released. It turned into probably the biggest deal in networking ever. This thing was used with firmware images like OpenWRT, DDWRT, Tomato. People had this thing running VPN servers and even were building robots and all sorts of stuff controlled by this because once you've got a little computer you can open it up and hook up to its serial ports or its GPIOs and the LEDs and you can do anything. It turned it into the modification platform for routers and OpenWRT and other firmware images still live on to this day on hundreds of other routers. Now this thing sparked a revolution. And I think that's where this thing is too. You know, ham radio, for the most part, doesn't really allow for a lot of modification anymore. I have an Icom ID51, I have a Yaesu FT70, an Anytone868, a few handhelds. And they're, they're great, but they're kind of boring because you can't do anything with them. All you can do is program them and say, well, that's the way the company shipped it. That's the feature in the firmware. I can't do anything about it. I think that needs to change. And this is the proof right here. So the GD77 was reverse engineered and now there's an open source GD77 build for it, which means I can go download that source code. So I did. I can go compile custom images for the GD77 and try crazy ideas like building a provisioning server for it. And that's exactly the point of this video. Really, I just want to get your attention and I want to talk to the right people and say, how do I go from crazy ideas to rolling this out? So if you are someone that works at ICOM, Yesu, Kenwood, or if you're a developer that wants to help build this out, we need to talk. This is a pain point for amateur radio. And the first way I'm gonna try and do some actual production proof of concepts now, I have to talk to our local repeater group. This is a shot I took off the roof of the building uh, about a week ago when we were there doing maintenance. All it's gonna take is a GD77 handheld with a custom firmware image, a filter, and a UHF antenna up on the roof of this building and I'm offering provisioning requests to all the GD77 radios that are able to receive that. So that's how simple this is to solve and it doesn't have to be that handheld. It could be software updates to a D-Star repeater, a system fusion repeater, could be a DMR repeater, or it could be something as simple as just a cheap 100 buck handheld radio plugged into an antenna on the roof of a building and you've covered a city of 700 plus thousand people You've covered that whole area with provisioning. So that's what I want to solve here. I need your help to do it. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you probably understand what's going on here and might be interested in helping. Take care.